Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Neck Center. I'm going to talk about something that actually is very common, though often when people come to the Hauser Neck Center in Fort Myers, Florida, they've already had some scans and the doctors have said everything's fine. So uh, there's people that sort of know that the blood flow to their brain, it's not correct. Like in other words, they could be relatively good, they move a certain way, then all of a sudden they get dizzy. Then they go to the doctor and the doctor orders an MR angiogram, like an MRI angiogram or a CT angiogram. So the doctors on the right road, they definitely feel like some of their symptoms are due to compression of an artery. Arteries to the brain give blood supply to the brain. So they do this scan and the doctor, the radiologist says, nope, everything's fine. So the doctor who's overseeing the person's care says, nope, that's not it. The problem is the scans are done when they're laying down. Like everybody knows, you know, you, you normally don't have horrible dizziness when you're laying down. It's always when you're upright. So in the office here at the Hauser Neck Center, what we do is we do transcranial Doppler exams with ultrasound when the person's upright and of course we move them and once we do that we find all kinds of compression of the arteries. So that is really helpful to people because not only can we document that they have vertebral basilar insufficiency which is compression of the vertebral artery which that's what we're going to talk about first but they also have some of the patients have actually compression of the carotid artery. So it's no wonder that they feel so terrible. So the carotid artery, that supplies about 70% or so, 75% of the brain's blood flow, especially in the front here. The vertebral arteries, they supply the back 25%. The brain needs a constant blood supply. The neuron activity of the brain is so enormous. Some of the studies I've seen that a normal cell in the brain can utilize oxygen like up to a hundred, a thousand times more than some of the other cells in the body. Like it's so metabolically active that the brain, even though the brain only weighs two percent of the body weight, it takes up twenty percent of the blood supply and the oxygen of the body. Like that's how metabolically active it is. You can see here the vertebral arteries go inside the vertebrae and then that supplies the back of the brain. You can see that here on this model. And then that's the end result of the vertebral artery is the basilar artery and it's supplying the back of the brain. So instability or extra movement of any of these vertebrae here can kink. We just call it kinking of the vertebral artery. The vertebral artery loops around C1 to go into the brain. So, so any sort of extra movement of C1 can absolutely kink the vertebral artery. And the best test to get, if you think you have this, like you turn your head. So when you turn your head to the left, it pr preferentially kinks the right vertebral artery and we do cone beam CT scans. So some people have a bony bridge right here. This bony bridge in some people and it's up to a third of the people is called ponticulus posticus. So if you have that plus instability and you have a bony ridge around your vertebral artery, I mean you're way more prone to getting kinking of your vertebral artery. And this is just shows the Doppler scan and we can get the peak systolic velocity. So in this person it was 56 and then uh, it shows the segment. So we do ultrasounds of the vertebral artery here. We can go inside the brain and then we're just looking for is there a major change in the velocity with a head position or with motion. And again this, this is just a model, but the vertebral artery, I'm going to show you where the vertebral artery can get kinked. So the vertebral artery can get kinked. It can get kinked at C1. When there's a lot of instability, the vertebral artery can be in places that it's not supposed to be. And then, you know, when it does get kinked, so we have 
I, I literally have a patient right now where basically all the arteries are getting compromised. So in other words, the person is so loose, they have such severe Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and such severe upper cervical instability and neck instability that they're with certain head positions, their blood supply in the right vertebral, left vertebral, right carotid, left carotid, they all with various positions can get compressed so the person at any moment could get so dizzy or they blank out like sometimes they a person can get catatonic like they'll just be there it's a type of seizure disorder if you will the brain's just not functioning right and it takes them a little bit of time to uh, to come back. This is from Dr. Rosa, who's a brilliant uh, chiropractor in New York, and he does very sophisticated MRIs, and this is one of the things he let me use. This one just shows, MRI can also show torturous vertebral arteries or other arteries, and it can compress on the brain stem. So occasionally we see that. It's called dolicoectasia, so the scientific term is called dolicoectasia. It just means windy, loopy blood vessels. So I personally think what happens is, uh, you know, the, pers the person has instability, instability, instability. So eventually these blood vessels are gonna go in goofy places because they keep getting pulled, they keep getting pulled over time. So it ends up in places that it shouldn't. Now you would say, well, what's the treatment for? Well, the treatment is align the atlas, stabilize the atlas, get a good cervical curve. So the tension is off of all these blood vessels and when the tension's off of all these blood vessels and if they have enough stability from the prolotherapy, then the person can be upright and do all the things. This just shows the carotid artery. It goes right by the atlas. So any kind of instability of the atlas can cause compression. I've seen people have horrible atherosclerosis on one carotid artery and not on the other. So personally, I think that's from stretching of the carotid artery from instability on that side. And then the body tries, so in other words, if you stretch an artery enough, the mucosal surface on the inside, the intima, the lining of it is could get little tears. So the body patches the tears with platelets and calcium. The calcium we know is plaque. So obviously once there's a calcium deposit and you're, me, Dr. Hauser, I have the very, very earliest start of plaque, which was picked up on the, my cone beam CT scan in my right carotid artery. And you might say, well, why? Well, I, 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 in other words, everything I do is the right side, right side, right side. I've been prone to having instability on my right side. I was a swimmer, you know, I did the Ironman five times. So in other words, even in me, the process has just started. So I have to make sure that I have a stable right side of my neck. So I, I'm choosing to do prolotherapy and that's what I'd recommend for you. Um, so the, you can see the carotid arteries right here. I've had around 10 patients who were diagnosed with mini strokes. They couldn't find anything. They went to the hospital and had the standard Doppler test. So they looked at the flow of the blood in the carotid artery, but they did it when they were laying down. And then when they came here and I moved them and upright, then we found out that the carotid artery did have a significant compression, but it was on account of a bad curve and instability. So for instance, I had one person where she was a teacher and she was cleaning out her drawer, you know, at the end of the year. So she was holding us like a flex posture and rotating. And then she got a mini stroke on that side. I had a fellow from Holland, I believe, or the Netherlands, and he was hoeing, you know, in the yard. And again, he was bent down, flexed in, a, in with his head rotated, and then he had a mini stroke too. And we found out, we found that they had dynamic carotid artery compression, which stopped, you know, once we corrected their cervical dysstructure, 
their misalignments and we helped with the instability. So this just kind of shows the person turns in a certain way and then because of the instability, the carotid artery gets compressed. Not only can the carotid artery get compressed, but also the various veins can get compressed. Vagus nerve is also getting compressed. Internal carotid arteries show up good on CT uh, angiograms and MR angiograms, but because they're laying down, it may not show the compressions. So that's all I'm saying. You may have to do it upright. And again, this is a CT venogram. So this is where you could see where this is the atlas, where the jugular vein is thick here, thick here, but see how it's getting compressed there. Any sort of atlas misalignment or instability in the upper cervical region can cause the atlas to compress the jugular vein. The cerebral spinal fluid can get blocked. So in this particular patient, you could see that their C3 was blocking the cerebral spinal fluid here. The cerebral spinal fluid there is white. That can also give you head pressure, all kinds of autonomic nervous system problems. So what we did was we helped them with their cervical curve and we got the C3 to be more forward. And then of course that restored their cerebral spinal fluid flow. The cerebral spinal fluid is supposed to surround the spinal cord, but if you guys looked at your MRIs, you can see where there are gonna be times where there's no cerebral spinal fluid on one side of the spinal cord. So that's a sign that the cerebral spinal fluid is getting blocked. When the cerebral spinal fluid flow is blocked or the jugular vein is blocked, you get the accumulation of toxins in the human brain. And because of increased brain pressure and the toxins, you can actually get brain neuron death and that brain neuron death can lead to uh, obviously brain atrophy. And if it gets too extensive, you can end up with dementia. So the treatment to help somebody who has dynamic carotid artery or dynamic vertebral artery compression which diagno diagnosis wise, that's vertebral basilar insufficiency or carotid artery insufficiency, compression of the jugular vein or CSF, cerebral spinal fluid stasis is going to be restoration of the cervical curve. Sometimes we'll uh, put weights on them and we'll x-ray the person to make sure the various weights restore the cervical curve and then we do adjustments and of course when the person has instability we do prolotherapy to tighten and strengthen the ligaments in the neck and that typically can give resolution or significant help for these conditions.